so much tech trickles down from mountain bikes to drop bar bikes. From disc brakes to one by, it was only a matter of time until suspension entered the conversation, which claims to sell salvation in the form of comfort, control, and reduced fatigue. But what do these promises actually look like in the real world? How much does it cost? How difficult is it to install? Oh, yeah, well, come out! Is it even necessary? Today, we're gonna dive deep into this controversial upgrade to see if it's the key to unlocking a greater adventure experience or if it's just an unnecessary complication. Wait, okay, right off the bat. Predictions, what do you think? Is this, which, which way are you going? So the bike I'll use for this project is this mid-level aluminum Canyondale Grazzle. It's got mechanical shifting, middle of the road, everything. It rides fine. The only thing I've done to it is upgrade the wheels with these Forge and Bond fusion fiber gravel wheels, which made a world of difference to this bike, which I'll explain in a little bit. But first, we've got to swap out this stock carbon fork for this RockShox Rudy gravel suspension fork. Okay, just gotta find the instructions. No instructions. Well, it's a good thing I'm not a mechanic, otherwise this might be difficult. If this is something you're interested in doing, you're going to have to check with the builder or manufacturer of your bike to make sure that it's compatible with the suspension fork. Because if it's not, the bike rides like trash. Don't ask me how I know that. He's carrying out to cross thread the adapter. There are some parts that I know I need that I don't have and some questions that I don't know that I know I need. So we're gonna check in with the pros to make sure the rest of this goes according to plan. The pros, here we go. Oh, thank God. Mark, I need your help. I got you, bro. What you need? Part of the reason this is so difficult is because Canyon uses an inch and a quarter opposed to the standard inch and an eighth. That little bit of difference adds up to a lot of headache. This is becoming quite an issue. Any thoughts? Yeah, it's uh, one of the problems with direct-to-consumer brands. Uh, there's no local Canyon store to go pick up this part from, and it's not a typical sized part that most bike shops would carry. Canyon would probably ship you one sometime next week, but it's sunny out tomorrow and you want to ride. Son of a bitch. This is the grown up version of what I'm trying to set up. You got it. Ready to roll. There is no way I would have been able to accomplish this without Cyclepath. There were way more parts, tools, and knowledge required than I even understood that I actually needed. <laughs> Installation of this fork from DIY to DI Don't is firmly in the DI Don't category. Bring this to the pros. Trust me, it's just, trust me. All right, let's talk about cost for just a moment. This suspension fork retails for 845 US dollars. Add in the cost of labor and small parts, and you're looking at a hefty price tag for an upgrade on your new rig. But since we are cyclists, the value and price of things doesn't always follow the same logic as it does for civilians. Let's find out what this has actually done to the bike with the ultimate goal of finding out if this is something that's actually worth doing. Is there rust on this chain? How rude. Oh, baby. The first thing you'll notice is putting this fork on your bike is gonna change the head tube angle, which makes the bike feel much more slack. Turning is a little sloggier. But around 10 to 15 minutes in, I stopped noticing it. That's nice. So this fork has a lockout and it does surprisingly well. There is barely any flex in this thing when it's locked out, which makes it perfect for these prerequisite highway miles. Oh, one thing to note is your average carbon fork weighs around one pound and this suspension fork weighs around three pounds. So that means you're adding two pounds of extra weight to your bike, but that might actually be worth it if it completely transforms the ride on your bike. 
which we plan to find out. And for a lot of this off-road climbing, I've just been leaving the fork open like you would on a mountain bike. Just a little more traction, and I figure it's there, I might as well utilize. Only when you really stand up, do you really notice it bobbing and weaving. Much to my surprise, this guy hasn't been bottoming out at all, which is exactly the way we like it. Okay, which way? This is the age of flying high. Age of flying high. Come on, let me walk. Just kind of rounding the edges, smoothing the chatter. Age of flying high. Anybody else out there got an extra bike or six that they've been meaning to sell, but you just haven't been wanting to deal with Craigslist? No, I will not hold it for you, or even worse, offer up. It clearly states pickup only. Well, lucky for us, there's a new player in town looking to change the game in the pre-owned bike market. They're a small group of cyclists that go by the name Bicycle. Like, B-U-Y cycle. Bicycle. Oh, I get it. What makes them so special? They offer buyer protection, secure payments, and they even have ultrasonic carbon fiber checks. It's a girl to look for stress fractures and delamination in carbon frames. I could probably use that. And for those of us whose partners think we have a bicycle problem, the selling process is streamlined with suggested pricing, a fast, convenient listing option. That's nothing. I heard Ron listed in under three parsecs. And your posting will have a global reach of over 30 countries. Take that, Craigslist. Not to mention, they'll send you a box, shipping supplies, a label, and schedule the pickup. Ah, <sighs> thank God. So whether you got a road bike, gravel bike, mountain bike, even a tri bike, they're interested. They're like a pre-owned bicycle cornucopia. Is that how you use that word? So check out bicycle.com to make all your pre-owned bicycle selling and acquiring dreams come true. I really, I'm really hoping you're N plus one in here, but if you sell and replace that, that also works. So far, I can't complain. This aluminum bike is a little rigid for long rides, but this fork and these wheels really do elevate the ride experience. So another thing to note with a fork like this is you're going to have to do regular maintenance, Aww. which is actually the same as any other suspension fork, around 50 hours. So this is an added cost and chore that you would have to consider if doing this upgrade. Is it worth it? Let's continue to find out. Well, the next thing to find out is how this thing descends. And we'll do that in just a moment. It's just right over this corner and up another thousand feet. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. With a little help from your friend. If any of this is landing for you, it might be time to check out channel memberships, early access, exclusive content, and more. And if you're not ready to commit, consider subscribing. It costs absolutely nothing and elevates your social profile. I wish my elevation would stop profiling. Yeah. All right, what goes up must go down. Might get by until the end. Oh, this stuff is loose. Oh, this message that I bring to you, yeah. Oh, I hope my friend is coming. This fork absolutely amplifies confidence in the dirt descents. If one of your less flattering features is descending off-road, this piece is gonna help. Highway. Lock it out. The lockout's good, like very strong. Like this little guy is just like any other suspension fork. You can set the rebound and the pressure, just like the big guys. It just comes in a smaller package. Party mode engaged. This thing smooths the ruckus just enough. It doesn't completely take it away where it's kind of boring. And doing this section with the fork locked out, it's definitely more aggressive. It's more jostling. The fork is absolutely doing something. I can tell how the fatigue would become an issue with a fully rigid fork compared to something like this that feels a little more planted, stable, and just smooth. Like you could go for way longer with the fork open than with the fork in a rigid mode or with a rigid fork. You hear that? 
It's the top cap for the lockout. It's loose. So I'm gonna see if I can tighten it and maybe it'll stop rattling. What the hell? Well, this is classic. My two millimeter has a lip on it and where it gets bigger, it stops it from getting in there. How was I supposed to know that this was gonna get loose? Yeah, that understand. did it. Thank you. Yeah. Totally fixed it. Thanks, player. Woo. Having the suspension on and then locking it out is totally analogous to riding an e-bike and turning the power off. You're like, ah, where'd all the fun go? Oh, Jesus. This Rudy comes in a 30 millimeter and a 40 millimeter suspension fork. I decided to go with the 40. I figure if you're going through all the effort, you might as well get as much suspension or cushion as you can. Hey, who would go with the 30 millimeter? I'm curious. Anybody? Come on, let me wipe the tears from your eyes. It's like Costco trail mix. <laughs> Come on. No good lines. Oh my god. Ah, this is how you know it's an adventure. No good lines. <sighs> if you do this route, you gotta stop at the Sage Cafe. Oh man. So far, so good. This route is so much fun. It is a cornucopia of experiences with a nice little coffee stop right in the middle. And then it goes right back into crazy. Okay, hang tight as I gather my notes and I report on what I think about this fork. Who it's for, who it's not for, where it excels, etc. 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 PM. Riding this fork on this ride has completely transformed my tune of suspension on gravel bikes. Very interesting. Mission accomplished. And the ride by the numbers? Four hours, three minutes, rolling time. 55.4 miles. Very dirty. And 2,958 feet of elevation. This fork, this fork is interesting. While I don't think this fork is for everybody, the fact that it's really hard to install, it's kind of expensive, and it adds an extra two pounds to your bike are all things to consider. Personally, I thoroughly enjoyed my experience riding this fork, which means there's absolutely a time and a place for this. If you're a roadie just getting into gravel and need that little bit of confidence and edge, this is something to consider. Similarly, if you're one of the wiser folks in life, maybe your bones are tired of getting rattled, in which case, this thing will help. But if you're sprightly, full of piss and vinegar, and charging every single ride, you might not need this thing. Take it, sunburn. And there's also the fact that changing things on your bike is just fun. If it's something that's gonna get you out on the road in an enjoyable fashion, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. This is going to be a personal decision, but if some of the things you're looking for have been covered in this video, then ultimately, I don't think you'll make a wrong decision. While this fork did transform this bike, there's one upgrade that has an even bigger impact on your bike. And to fully understand that, you'll have to watch this video. It's a doozy. Those roadies are gonna be so bummed.